Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am a little bit sick right now, so that's why my voice sounds kind of weird and off. But I wanted to record this video for you guys because I'm supposed to be getting my engine within the next few days. The engine was supposed to technically like, get here, I would say about two days ago, but um, it's been sitting at the um, shipping facility for some reason for some time. And I guess they're like loading it onto the truck. I'm not really sure what's taking them so long. But I wanted to go over the condenser and the radiator part right now i actually ordered the parts and they both came in today which is really cool because i think the condenser was supposed to get here tomorrow right here we have the old radiator right here at the top um you have the coolant hoses that will attach right here and then these bottom lines right here are actually the transmission lines you can actually remove these and i'll show you guys right now how but i just got like an open ended wrench and then i have the new one right here that Technically is like exactly the same as this one over here, but the fittings are a little bit different in size um, One of them did come like a little bit damaged which was this one right here Which I could have sent it back, but it was just a fitting nothing else is really broken on it All of like the fittings and the connections everything mounts up and look the same as the OEM one Like right here you can see the two little squares at the bottom and which the fans sit in and then on the back you have this side right here where the condenser sits in those little grooves at the bottom and then you have these holes right here where it's going to mount up these right here so just like that it comes loose one of these on the new one came damaged which i was going to go ahead and replace but it's a different size this one's actually smaller on the inside versus this one over here when it comes to the thread pitch um, that's the only thing i ran into but i was able to bend it back and i put some soapy water on it and then i blew on it right here from this side and then with the soapy water you would be able to see anything coming out um, if it had any leaks nothing was coming out so we should technically be good with that it shouldn't really be leaking at all so there's also these little clips that I already put on here that hold in the fans into place so it doesn't pop out on the top part and then over here you have the condenser right there <laughs> and right here you can see this one looks horrible a completely horrible junkie and everything. Um, it actually has like this tie that feels replaced and it has the fittings right here on the side and they seem to be the same as the other one. Uh, one thing that I did notice with the condenser that came on my M45 was that it was missing a bracket right here that goes onto the little canister, which is this one right here. It sits in like that and it has a little clip that's supposed to hold it in, but for some reason they didn't have it. And I was actually kind of confused on why would it have this bolt right here if there's nothing in holding it into place. And I believe the previous person that worked on this car took it off and forgot to put the bracket into place. This thing literally just like came off easily and I wasn't sure why it was like that. I thought I just pushed it to place and that was it, but it's missing that bracket. I actually have it over there and I'll show you guys right now what it looks like. But from the condenser part, um, all I really have to remove um, is going to be the sensor right here, and then we're going to go ahead and plug it in over there. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with the radiator. It worked perfectly fine. I didn't have any issues with the leaking. Um, I just decided to go ahead and replace it since I'm changing out the motor. I'm not sure how much life this has left, so I thought I'd go ahead and replace it at the same time. This is the new condenser right here, and as you guys can see, it looks so much cleaner and better. And it fits exactly how it should, like an OEM style. And then the fittings, they look exactly the same. Same size, everything. That is the bracket that I was talking about right there that was missing on my end. You can see it has like that little bracket holding it in. And that's easily not gonna allow it to sit in properly. And it's just gonna pop out all the time. And that's exactly what happened. Cause when I removed the entire core support in the front, this thing was just popped out. I'm just gonna take this from off. And then it has a whole ring already on here, but we're gonna take this one off. Put the new one on there, of course. Just right there. All right, cool, perfect fit. Now just gonna tighten it. Now we just gotta connect these over here. Um, to remove these right here, you need special fittings. And then you put them in the goggles really quick. I got these from Amazon. They were pretty cheap, they were like, I think it was like 20 bucks, and these were perfect. But you need these type of fittings in order to be able to remove the AC lines. And then I used two of them specifically, there's a bigger one, 
which I think is this one. And how it works is you stick it in there. So it goes something like this. And then you would pull on the line from the top, but you have to really push this up and then it'll grab like the inner clamp that's inside. It'll release it so you can take the line off. You do have to use a lot of force and some strength to be able to take it off, but it will come off easy with these right here. You should for sure get these. I was able to remove them within like, obviously a minute after using this. I am gonna go ahead and place this one over here. So you guys can see how it fits. So this goes up that, and then it's gonna sit on those little holes right there, just like that. And then you're gonna take these off. Um, I think they're 10 mils. Yep, it's 10 mil. So just like that's how it fits. And then for these right here, these brackets, just take them off of your old radiator, put them on here. But don't take these down all the way. So you do actually need to lift it up when you put the sides in there. But yeah, it works perfect. Uh, no issues with it. It looks exactly the same as the other one. Tell me that doesn't look a lot better. Like, huge difference from the previous one. Hopefully there's no leaks with anything. So we have like this one right here, for example. I don't remember where this one goes exactly. Um, it looks a little bit bigger, so I might go right here. But you just stick it in there. So like this one right here would go right there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one goes right here because it goes to the bottom right there, to the AC compressor, and then this connects right there. Just push it in, it should clip into the little ring that's inside of there, and then that should lock it in place. I did replace the old rings because it has some green ones on there. I put some new ones, got them from AutoZone. And then this one right here is going to need to replace, I just need to go purchase it because I ran out. So here are the fans. I didn't order these just because it was still working good. And to replace this is actually really, really easy. Um, it takes like no time at all. There's literally the two clips that go on the top to remove. And then at the bottom it just sits in these little grooves that are right there. But I do actually have another one of these that I picked up from Nissan directly. So I'll go ahead and swap this out too. All right now since I already have it off. And then we're just gonna put it on here and it goes to the connection to the fans. That way they can work properly. There is an issue with the M45. Sometimes the fans will run all the time, which is not supposed to. So it's supposed to run at certain times, but when the module goes bad, the fans will either just stop working completely or run at all times and it's not supposed to do that. So uh, this is gonna go on this side over here. And you would put it right in those holes and it fits perfect. And then with these clips right here, you would just pull it up, put it on top of there, so it clamps it down and it doesn't come off. It's that easy. And that's how the whole assembly looks together. It's pretty light right now because I mean, there's no fluid in there or anything. So just wanted to show you guys that really quick. But I need to replace this module. It just has two 10 mils and then I'll clip it and put the new one back in there. For installing the condenser and the radiator, you can put them together just like that and then you can slip it in the core support has already like an indentation where it falls in along with the canister right here and then also it has the lines that go connected right there so you'll have to kind of loosen them to get them out of the way but it's going to fall inside that hole right there lining up with the one at the bottom i would have you go ahead and go under the car right here and ensure that the little like pipe that's sticking out goes right there and then that means it's in and then you just gotta move it back and then it'll sit right in there just like that and then you're gonna grab these little brackets right here and you're gonna move it to the front and that'll support it right there and then you can tighten it down so it doesn't get out of place same thing with this one now for some reason this one's missing like the rubber piece that goes in here so it might have fallen out but you can just get like a rubber hose cut it put it in there and that'll work perfect as well and then the fans are over there uh, same process except that you put it in there and then it's gonna fall in those little holes but right now I'm gonna install these transmission lines right here just like that and this one over here 
And then we gotta get the clamps over. And then this goes to uh, the fans. It's a control module. Uh, this, you wanna leave it loose. Put it up like that. That when you put the fans in, this will also hold the fans into place so it doesn't fall out. So I think we're good to go ahead and put the fans on. All right, I put a new control module right here. Um, if you're having issues where your fans only run or where your fans are consistently running, then you need to change out the control module. So that's why I changed mine because mine was always running. It would never turn off. So right there, we're just going to feed it in. All right, guys. So here is everything installed. I'm going to give you guys a quick update on what happened because I installed everything and it turned out that the radiator that I purchased, which is this portion right here, was actually leaking from the bottom side where the transmission lines mount and I had to go ahead and take it off and reuse my old one. I think the main thing that I needed was the condenser, which is the other portion over here. Um, I was able to put AC in the car so the AC now works because since I've got this car from like the auction or from full part, it hasn't had any AC at all. And now it's working, so that's perfect, especially because I live in Arizona. You, like, need AC. Uh, when it's cold, you don't really need it because you can just use, like, the heater. and Or you can put the windows down. It feels nice outside. But when it's hot, it's hot here in Arizona. But I put the I put the fans on as well. These clips just go over it, hold it into place. Uh, there's another one over there. That one. So that's going to hold that into place as well. And then you have the control module. I put in a new one right there. I already explained earlier why you need to replace it if your fans keep running. But that's how that looks. Um, and then of course you're gonna put coolant in here. I use Nissan and I have it over here, which is this one right here. It's pre-diluted, which means that you don't need to add any water to it. And then you're gonna add the coolant in here. I use a funnel that I purchased from Amazon. Been driving it for a few days. It hasn't overheated or anything like that. Um, and what the funnel is gonna do, it's gonna sit on here and it's gonna raise it to about this high. So that is the highest point of the car. That way it can burp the system properly. And you actually need to open the screw right there to allow all the air to come out. Once you do that, you will see a bunch of like air come out of the system because it's just gonna be filled with air and then the coolant is gonna technically like push it to the top. You gotta open it to release it and you can start putting coolant until it fills up and it stops going down. Um, you don't need to overfill the uh, coolant reservoir. Just leave it at the top. Whatever excess you have, put it over there in that reservoir so you don't like throw that coolant away. And then it has a few hoses. So yeah, this hose that goes connected there. Check this part out right here. This if you need to replace it because that thing will get old over time and it'll honestly like crumble into pieces and the other motor that i had that thing broke into little pieces and those little pieces fell into the holes right here and went all the way down into the other side of the radiator plug right there same thing over there goes all the way connected right there so that's all that really goes to it that goes connected um, and then you have like the condenser that goes connected right here. You need those special tools that I showed you guys earlier to be able to remove them and put them back in. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and end the video right there. I have been tracking the car to see how it's doing when it comes to the engine oil and the coolant. So far every single day, I haven't seen any problems with the coolant. Uh, it's not losing anything, the reservoir is full. Um, I haven't seen like anything coming down from the bottom of the engine or changing a different color And I've been removing the cap every single time I get into the car and no issues at all perfectly fine When it comes to the engine oil, I've been running the car now for 800 miles And so far I haven't seen like really any oil consumption um, It was at the top line where that hole's at Now it's like a little bit lower but it could be possible that it's just the engine oil is like all over the place So it just needs to drop all the way down to the sump and it hasn't got to do that yet So I'm going to continue to monitor it but so far it doesn't have oil consumption like my other motor did. My other motor, like at 250, it would already lose like a quart. It would be like at the top line, it would be at that bottom line as soon as it hit 250 miles. So it was really bad when it came to my other motor's oil consumption. But this one, nothing close to that, so it should be good. 
if it ran 800 miles and it's still technically like at that top line i highly doubt that it'll even be halfway if we go another 800 which is going to be about 1600 miles and by then um, i should be pretty close to doing an oil change usually i do about 5,000 to 4,000 miles when i do my oil changes so we'll see if there's any like huge oil consumption between then but right now i do um, check the engine oil before i actually turn on the car so whenever i'm going somewhere before i even move it i'm always checking it to ensure that it's at a proper level you don't want to turn on the car when it's low because it will damage the engine so that's what i'm technically doing right now is just monitoring every single day um, just to ensure that it's at a correct level and so far it's running really really good but i do have a few more exciting videos for the m45 a few things that i picked up that i think a lot of you guys will like and enjoy and a few things that we're going to be changing up on it and making it look really sick but that's going to conclude the video if you guys have any questions make sure you leave it down in the comments below or you can follow me on instagram that's usually where i post the most and where i'm mostly active Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.